We are constantly bombarded with messages screaming for our attention. What will we pay attention to? What will we ignore? We decide two ways, visually and quickly. And let's face it, we've gotten pretty good at glancing, deciding, and ignoring. It's a defense mechanism. We protect ourselves because our time is valuable. School, work, relationships, worries, problems, if it doesn't impact us directly or offer some sort of welcome distraction, we move on. We ignore it. Our goal was to end the barbaric destruction of human life in America known as abortion. We're not talking about saving a few babies here and there. We mean end it. We mean ending abortion altogether. Winning. 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 Winning is the only way the killing stops. The killing stops. The killing stops. How do we win? How do we end abortion? How do we stop the killing? Pregnancy centers are awesome. They're saving women, children, and families. Law restrictions are saving some. They're like the Underground Railroad. The railroad saved some from slavery, but some wasn't enough. Slavery needed to end. Many claim to be pro-life, but they also say abortion should be legal in the first trimester. Far fewer than half of us are committed to ending abortion, not nearly enough. On the other hand, only a few are committed to unlimited abortion on demand. Most are in the middle. They think abortion is a necessary evil. That means half of us, tens of millions of Americans are still up for grabs. They don't know much and consequently, they don't care much. And they like it that way. It's easier not to care. We must prove to them that abortion is so evil, it ought to be against the law. It takes maybe three seconds for them to realize who we are and look the other way. We can't let them do it. We can't let them ignore us any longer. We must break through the apathy. And we can do it. It's happened before. Most people in London didn't know much or care much about the slave trade. So William Wilberforce and Thomas Clarkson used pictures like these to show people the horrors of slavery. Their victory is a roadmap for us. Others have followed that same roadmap and it worked over and over again. Whether it's Martin Luther King Jr. and the fight to end segregation, or Lewis Hines' fight to end child labor, or William Wilberforce in the fight to end slavery, we can learn from those who came before. The plan laid out by each of these reformers was the same. that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. We merely bring to the surface the hidden tension that is already alive. We bring it out in the open, where it can be seen and dealt with. Good evening, Dr. Martin Luther King, the apostle of nonviolence in the civil rights movement, has been shot to death in Memphis. When our student group discussed our goal, it was simple and abortion. We looked at what would make an impact. We'd done different events, handed out flyers, but we were ignored. When I asked my friends if they'd seen our information table at the student center, they'd say, what? We have a pro-life group? It was disheartening, but it was also a wake-up call. We are never going to win as long as we are ignored. When we first learned about the Genocide Awareness Project, or GAP, at the National Students for Life Conference in DC, we said we had to do it. The influence of this project was immeasurable. We're constantly doing pro-life activities on campus, but there's nothing as grand as GAP. We reached more students in two days than we could reach with a tabletop display every day for two semesters. One thing is for sure, we were not ignored. A lot of people say to avoid tension, that making people feel uncomfortable works against us. But tension and conflict can be a measure of progress, and it pushes more people to think. When we showed pictures of abortion, we created lots of tension. The pro-aborts were forced to come out and defend the practice of decapitating and dismembering little human beings. We had never made them do this before, and they did not like it, not one little bit. 
They got angry, but ultimately, this just brought more attention to the pictures. As a result of all the attention, we had more discussion, more dialogue, and more people changing their stance on abortion than ever before. We have three seconds to convince millions of ignorant and apathetic Americans that abortion is so evil, it ought to be against the law. The Genocide Awareness Project is our best shot at reaching millions of college students before they can look away. In a moment, GAP brings millions of future decision makers face to face with the reality of abortion. Abortion is drawn out into the light, its evil is exposed, and people are no longer able to remain ignorant or apathetic. We can do this. We can end abortion.